Today in the EU, how Fito's assassination attempt sparked debate on political violence. Slovakia's Prime Minister Robert Fico was shot five times in an assassination attempt that shocked Europe. The attack against him has brought the issue of violence against politicians into the discourse and has raised the pressing questions what is the current state of the Slovak political scene and how can stability be achieved. Hello and welcome. I am Vikiori and this is Today in the EU. To understand better what is happening with Slovak politics, we are joined by Radovan Gist, publisher of Euractiv Slovakia. Radovan, things in Slovakia are quite unstable currently. The prime minister was a victim of attack last week. Tell us, what happened exactly? There was a government meeting in Handlova, which is in central Slovakia. After the meeting, the prime minister went outside uh, and then he was attacked. A man down nearby shot at him five times. Then he went to hospital because uh, at least two injuries were quite serious. Since then, he's treated in hospital. He had a couple of operations. And what is the latest on his situation now? For now, it seems, based on the reports from the hospital, that his health is uh, stabilized, but he's still in serious condition. Matus Šudaj Estok, Slovakia's interior minister, stated that the government will consider the attack a politically motivated act. Trestného činu vraždy v štádiu pokusu, že pracujeme iba s jednou verziou, And you know, there has been lots of speculation regarding the motives behind the attack, but has the motive become officially known yet? It's difficult to say, obviously. Officially, uh, there are still a couple of possible versions of why did it happen and how did it happen, but the most probable one is that it has been politically motivated. It doesn't mean that the attacker belonged to any particular group. Based on what we know about him, uh, he had you know kind of a mixed and complicated part Uh, but he was involved in some political activities in the past. The fact is that he most probably acted alone, so it wasn't uh, an organized attack, and it was a, a result of, let's say, strongly polarized and violent political debate that is now in Slovakia uh, for at least a couple of months, if not years. So that's what we know by now, but obviously, mm-hmm. uh, obviously the uh, investigation is ongoing, And they are working on, on several versions, including the one that it could have been an organized group, which is highly improbable. And Fico isn't the only one who is victim of attacks. In Poland, Donald Tusk has also received threats. In Germany, we have seen the social democratic candidate in the European elections, Matthias Eck, that was attacked as well. Is there a comparison with what happened in Slovakia? I guess to an extent, yes. Uh, not only because politicians are being attacked. And we can also add uh, a Labour MP, which was killed in the UK before the mm-hmm. Brexit referendum. So uh, you have this kind of atmosphere of conflict, let's say rhetorical violence that is happening online, but sometimes it goes also in a very tragic way to, to the offline world. So in this sense, yes, this is happening in several countries. We can trace developments to social media that, unlike traditional media, are not regulated. So they help to spread uh, uh, the hatred uh, and violent language. But the truth is also that we have increasing number of politicians that are using violent language against their opponents or other groups. And this is another point I wanted to make. If you take it as, a, as an attack on the politician or uh, a high-level politician, prime minister, It's an unprecedented act. Mm-hmm. But if you look at it uh, as uh, one of the series of violent uh, attacks that were motivated by personal hatred, it's just another attack. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have had attacks on Roma families here uh, or individuals who had been killed because of their ethnic origin. We have had an attack on journalists uh, who was killed together with his fiance. Uh, we have had, a, uh, had an attack two years back on the LGBTI community. Again, uh, it was motivated by personal hatred. And the fact is that the attacker originally wanted to attack the prime minister at that time, uh, Eduard Heger. So you can see this kind of continuation, uh, uh, continuing trend of attacks against people who are basically hated. And then, uh, let's say the rhetorical, as I said, the rhetorical violence, one point gets manifested in a offline uh, uh, physical world as, a, as, as an attack. Now, in Germany, the situation seems to be particularly bad, with the national media reporting that there has been a significant increase in attacks on politicians. The most affected political party is the Greens, that is a partner in Chancellor Olaf Scholz's coalition, which reported 1,219 incidents of verbal and physical attacks. Now is the moment that all Democrats come and say, we will not 
Now is the time for all Democrats to unite and say loud and clear, we will not give up, said Ricarda Lang, member of the Bundestag and co-leader of the Alliance 90 and the Greens, during a pro-democracy protest in Berlin against political violence. Radovan, do you think we're indeed seeing a rise in political violence in Europe, or was this simply not discussed enough? We have had it before. We had Olaf Palma killed, we had Wolfgang Schäuble who was attacked and so on. So there are numerous European politicians that had been attacked. But the fact is that we are going through a series of crises which are polarizing society. So people with different opinions, these different opinions are not seen as legitimate political opinions, but more as uh, as a personal threat uh, that should be eliminated somehow. Even in the discussions, uh, you have this militarized language of defeating the opponent and so on. Uh, so the whole politics is more and more presented as some kind of a battlefield. Uh, and this is happening all around Europe, mm-hmm. uh, I guess, in some countries more, in some countries less. But we have these numerous crises that are not resolved, plus other factors. I have mentioned some of them. Social media, they play a huge role. And then also, it quite often happens that economic and social divisions are manifested in heightened crisis and they can lead to violence, mm-hmm. not only rhetorical violence, but also physical violence. So this is happening in, in several countries. And coming to what's in store for Slovakia now, do you see a depolarization and de-escalation of the current debate? or The overall attitude, I'm talking about general attitude, not about extremes or whatever, after the attack uh, was a shock. So, you know, everybody was saying, how could this happen? Uh, have you contributed to this by criticizing sometimes quite strongly uh, politicians uh, on this or that side uh, and so on. So there were calls for, let's call it the round table of political representatives that would try to, uh, let's call it negotiate, if not truth, but then at least some limitations of what we do and what we say in, in political debates. Uh, I don't think this will happen. When it comes to policies, do you see these events affecting the initial plans of the government? Today, we have a declaration approved in the national parliament, which actually uh, was supported by most of the political parties, basically saying that we are against violence and so on. But then at the same time, there was an invitation from uh, an acting president and an elected president sent to representatives of political parties to meet uh, at a round table and discuss you know, how to lower the level of aggression mm-hmm. in the political debate. And they have refused, not all of them, uh, but basically parties that are members of the governing coalition, two of them, Slovak National Party, Nationalist Party, and Smer Party of the Prime Minister Fico, they said, and they found some pretext for that, but they said that they will not participate. So this is not going to happen. And at the end of the day, I don't think it will change very much on the political debate because it's mostly the politicians that are responsible for uh, this level of violent rhetorics that will not stop using it because they see that it works politically for them. I mean, they get they got elected uh, on this kind of rhetorical violence mm-hmm. uh, in September. Uh, I'm talking about the Slovak National Party, for example, or or uh, Smer Party, so the parties that are in the in the governing coalition, and to an extent, some politicians from Alasnost, which is the third uh, party. And they will continue using it because it will work. I mean, it worked in the presidential elections and they hope it will work in the EP elections. And has this changed the messaging coming from the government? Now, talking about the government, much of this uh, has been played around around the uh, proposals that uh, the government had on the uh, rule of law institutions, you know, limitations of the freedom of media and so on. Sometimes uh, the discussion was really polarized, Mm -hmm. but for obvious reasons, because all these things are quite seriously or could quite seriously affect uh, the way how uh, Slovakia as a liberal democracy is working. So uh, government is making no secret that it wants to mimic somehow the Orban's Hungary. Uh, so it's a divisive political issue. One way of kind of stopping this kind of polarization is to hold back and try to discuss things. If there is something we should improve on the functioning of the, I don't know, judiciary or the, uh, how the police works, Okay, let's find a common ground, Mm -hmm. let's agree on some uh, set of reforms and so on. But they are not going to do that. Uh, Basically, they will just push uh, through their agenda and they are even using the attack uh, as a pretext for further attacks on independent media, uh, non-governmental organizations, civil society and so on.
all in all, nothing will happen. Populist politicians will just get uh, one more, let's say, uh, weapon in their arsenal saying that if you are criticizing government, you are actually, you know, somehow contributing to what has happened uh, to the attack on the prime minister, which is complete nonsense because criticism is part of democratic politics. It's not, uh, you know, the same thing as, as, as a violent attack. For him, but I had the chance that I came in the right moment when he was able to speak with me a few sentences, but the situation is very critical and we have to uh, give him a lot of energy and uh, think and be positive. Said Slovakia's newly elected president, Peter Pellegrini, after visiting Robert Fico in the hospital. So has this incident affected his role? The new elected president, Peter Pellegrini, from uh, one of the governing parties, he had been uh, closely cooperating with Fico in the same political party. After last elections, he had split from the party, but they are still cooperating in the government. Maybe he would want to appear a bit more moderate, uh, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I don't think he will be any kind of counterbalance to the politics. It's like, you know, uh, in Poland, you had Duda, who was elected on the peace list, and uh, and mm-hmm. basically he didn't even try to appear as an independent, uh, maybe sometimes moderating the conflict, but always on the side of the peace government. The same, I guess, will happen here. Thank you, Radovan, for joining us again and explaining how the situation in Slovakia is likely to evolve. I am Evi Kjori, and this was your Actives today in the EU podcast. Visit your Active to stay on top of the latest news, sign up for our podcast newsletter, and if you haven't subscribed or followed us yet, you can find us on all streaming platforms. Also, make sure to leave a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Your reviews help us a lot to spread the word about our work. This episode was produced by Miriam Sainz de Tejada, Nicoleta Yonta, and myself. Thank you for tuning in, and until tomorrow. As part of our commitment to accuracy, inclusion and transparency, Euractiv is part of the Trust Project.